Hey guys, what's up? My name is JJ Burzness, and in today's Cinema 4D modeling tutorial, we're going to go over three effects that can help speed up the modeling workflow. Now, if I can find my project file right here. <coughs> so basically, today we're going to go over the, the meta ball effect, we're going to go over atom arrays, and we're going to go over symmetry objects. Now, I'll quickly explain each before I show you. Uh, the meta ball is basically um, <coughs> lots of little objects or spheres. Um, put into a meta ball object and then it, it kind of creates a real flow looking effect kind of goops them together I'm not really sure how to explain that one but <clears throat> as you can see uh, the blue object over here that's basically what you create out of it secondly is an atom array an atom array will basically take the polygons in your object and um, <clears throat> wherever the polygons join together uh, it will create like a cylinder or an atom array and lastly, we have the symmetry object. The symmetry object is great for speeding up workflow uh, because any changes you make to the one object will be reflected to a, a mirrored identical image of it. <clears throat> okay, so let's open up a new project and I'll go over the symmetry objects for now. Okay, so if I grab in a cube and I go to the array object menu and I go to, or is it symmetry? And I drag the cube into the symmetry <coughs> And if we move our cube over a little bit, you'll see it creates a, a mirrored identical object of it. <clears throat> and when I say identical, it really is identical in the sense that if we edit the polygons on this, say, these two sides, you'll see that that's reflected upon its copy over here. So any changes you make to this will, um, will be retained on the other object. So this is amazingly great for saving time. I can't explain how many times I've actually used this tool because <clears throat> it, it's basically an essential um, if you're going to be modeling. I'm sorry if you guys hear me, uh, my throat or something. It's because I've, um, I'm feeling a little sick today. But anyway, <clears throat> I'd also like to explain why this tutorial has been so delayed. Um, every time I've went to record this, uh, I record with Camtasia Studio and basically Camtasia Studio has been acting up a little bit lately and when I record hasn't been recording audio or hasn't been like just the video skipping it's not syncing up properly and then Sony Vegas on top of that hasn't been rendering properly for me either. So let's hope this will render out properly. <clears throat> so as you can see here um, Anything, any changes that we make onto the one cube is reflected upon the other one. So you can create some pretty interesting um, and intricate models with this that look pretty awesome like that. So um, I'm pretty sure this one's probably pretty self-explanatory. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so that is the symmetry tool for today. Now we're going to go over the uh, meta ball and then the atom array. So if we go into a new project and I'm going to bring in a sphere and go to our array menu and click on meta ball. So if we drag our sphere into the meta ball, you'll see kind of this little bit of a transformation happens. We're going to have to add another sphere just below it, but make sure it's still a child of the meta ball. I'm going to maybe shrink this down a little bit, move it somewhere, and you'll see that it creates kind of a gooey looking effect, like a real flow effect. Now if we click on the meta ball and edit some of the settings here like bring down editor subdivision and editor and render subdivision means the editor subdivision is what you see right now and the render subdivision is basically what it's going to render as so you could probably keep it pretty high so you could see like maybe an animation so it doesn't slow down and then have the render uh, the render subdivision really low so it renders nicely but I've got a pretty fast computer, so we're going to go at, at about four. That should look good. Okay, um, <clears throat> and you can put as many spheres in here as you want. So I'm going to put a couple of other little ones. Now, I will warn you guys that um, the meta ball effect is extremely overused now. Back when I did uh, a previous tutorial I did on this actual effect, um, it wasn't very widely known at the time. But now, I, I, every channel I go on to basically has <laughs> at least one video of the meta ball like an animation with it or something. So do beware that 
um, try and be a little more creative with the meta ball and not just um, create a liquidy type animation. If you can be more creative with it, I'm sure that um, you'll get a lot more views. So anyway, um, this is the kind of effects that you can create. You can create some really cool looking things. I've seen people create water with it and all different types of stuff. So I highly suggest checking this um, this little module out within Cinema 4D. And now the next object I'm going to talk about is the Atomaray. Um, and now the Atomaray can t tie into the Meta Ball effect. <clears throat> um, so if we go to our Array menu and go to Atomaray, and we drag our Meta Ball into the Atomaray, you'll see all these little atoms or spheres start to pop up. Now if we bring down the Polygon count on our Meta Ball, sorry, bring it up, rather, um, probably about to there, and bring the Render Subdivision to roughly the same, <clears throat> you'll see that it creates basically um, an array of atoms, which is why it's called an atom array. But if we get rid of all these little spheres here, so we go into the atom array, and we go to, um, where is it, sphere radius, if we bring that down to the same radius as the cylinder, then we're left with kind of a wireframe looking um, type of effect. And now the wireframe effect is very good when, um, if you've got maybe the modeling of a building, you could basically create the wireframe of a building and make it look like, you know, a construction in progress or something, kind of like some metal pylons or something. And um, if you ever see at a concert, um, you can probably type it into Google Images if you haven't seen it before. But um, basically there's like these metal pylons um, at concerts, so you can create some metal pylons and stuff with this as well. It's a lot more quicker than just simply placing the um, cylinders down as you would see but also the more um, cylinders that are in here the longer the render time is going to be so try and take that in into consideration when you're using this now of course this doesn't have to be used with meta balls this can be used with anything we could use it with uh, a cube so if we just get rid of that for now and we drag our cube into an atom array <coughs> you will see that if I can just get this down which I cannot there we go um, it reacts to the side of a polygon now the side of a polygon is basically where the polygon connects to another polygon and that's where the sphere is going to be so if we add some polygons to our cube you'll see that everywhere there's, there's you know a face of a polygon where the polygon ends there's a, um, there is a cylinder I'm probably not explaining this very well but um, anyway this also live updates to any changes you make to the cube or whatever object it may be so if we go to edit it and we select a couple of faces of the cube I'm gonna turn this off just to show you if we extrude the cube like that maybe extrude inner extrude again and we turn our atom array on oops um, you'll see it's updated to basically reflect those changes so this is very good when trying to make maybe uh, of the wireframe of a house or something but another cool effect I've found with this is that if we bring in a let me see a torus into the atom array we'll get this kind of wireframe effect like before but if we um, paste in another torus just underneath that you'll see we have the torus and then we have a torus underneath it but it, it gives it kind of a 3D-ish kind of texture looking thing and it almost looks like what a Spider-Man um, suit would look like so if you've ever seen that let me just bring that up um, let me find one let me see uh, this will this will do for this I hope I don't get copyright for this um, anyway as you can see on the suit it's got kind of a 3D looking web on it now you can create the same kind of effect by using atom arrays and an, the same object underneath it you can create the same kind of texture so um, I'm gonna bring in a really bad looking figure it's a terrible figure but you could use anything for this it doesn't have to be just um, just a figure or something so if we drag our figure into the atom array you'll see it's it, it, it looks a lot like um, the kind of spider web the spider web effect I was talking about and if we maybe add like kind of a whitish texture to the figure 
this one. No, yes. Mm, yes, there we go. And we add maybe a red to the other um, figure. You see, we kind of get this Spider-Man looking um, character right here. So if you were trying to create maybe a Spider-Man character or something, you could model maybe a human or you could get a model off the internet for free or purchase one. Um, and then you could drag it into an atom array and use this type of effect to achieve what um, the Spider-Man texture would look like. So this is another cool thing, just one of the cool things you can do with atom arrays. So um, that's probably about it for today guys, it's been about 10 minutes, it's probably a good time to start wrapping up. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go over what we went over. So we went over the uh, symmetry tools, we went over the metaballs, if I can get that back up. Uh, no I cannot. There we go, we went over meta balls and we went over atom arrays. So um, if you guys learned something from this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and comment. Um, anyway guys, my name is JJ Business. I'm signing out. Remember bros, practice and enjoy. Peace.